Alrighty, it's been a couple weeks since we've made a video, or posted a video. I've got some stuff I need to edit, but uh, it's March 3rd, and it's uh, get up to 55 degrees here in Maine, central Maine. And you can see the bees have been out doing a huge cleansing flight. Uh, lots of old dead bees, some some live bees out kicking around. You can see where they've been doing their, their cleansing. So we're going to dig into a hive here and maybe get a little bit more invasive in the hive than we usually do this time of year. But it's, it's really warm, so we want to check it out. And, yeah, I put some feed in here a week or so ago, and they've been slowly sucking that down, so... And it has been freezing, so that's good. Yeah, I see all kinds of live bees down here. And uh, I think maybe, you can see them up, up in the top here. I don't know just how invasive I wanna get, but we'll, we'll take a good look. They got a lot, a huge candy board here and a bunch of pollen. They're not really eating the pollen. So uh, that good sign, bad sign, I'm not really sure, but we're gonna go ahead and just kind of leave this one alone because I don't want to dig into this sugar candy any more than I have to. But that one's looking pretty good. They got the pollen patties there. They've been leaving that alone for the most part. So we're just gonna leave them alone and uh, we'll see how things go over the next few weeks. Let's go to the next one. I'm okay with that. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this quilt box. What I've been doing is I uh, I use these quilt boxes this year and this worked out pretty good. I might have modified them a little bit next year, but basically I want the moisture to come up through, get caught, caught in the burlap. And then I have these vents that are shielded so mice and stuff can't get in. And the air will go in there and dry the burlap. So that way there I can, uh, I don't have to worry about the bees getting uh, a lot of moisture built up. At least that's my, the attempt and that's an empty jar in there I left the other day and yeah this one is taking quite a bit of liquid I'm a little little surprised at how much they've taken I have number two, again, uh, lots of sugar in there, maybe too much. I'm gonna try to rework this for a little bit, put that sugar closer to the middle, see if we can start pushing it to the middle and get the cluster back there. But again, they're eating some of the pollen. So hopefully that means that the queen has started laying uh, and we can go from there. But let me, let me fix this a little bit and then we'll move on to the other hives. Uh, on a side note, Today is election day. Those of you who have not got out yet to vote, uh, highly suggestive that you do. I'm not gonna tell you how you should vote, who you should vote for, but you know, I uh, live in here in Maine. I was listening to the Secretary of State on an interview this morning. It says that they only expect about 15% of the eligible voters to vote. And uh, I guarantee there's more than 15% of eligible voters complaining about how things are and uh so if you want to see change number one be informed and then number two make a difference because uh everyone can make a difference but all right i'm gonna go ahead and grab the smoker here see what we can do here so if we can push them down a little bit so i can get them flying up in the quilt box quite as much Yeah, this one is, uh, the cluster is definitely broke, and uh, I don't know, seems a little small, but they're eating through the pollen, doing everything, so it's kind of a very, very small one, so I don't know what to expect. Let's see if we can dig in here a little bit. Well, look at this. No worry about these guys starving, at least not right off. This, this uh, frame here, lots and lots of food in it. So really, I don't have to worry about feeding these guys at all. There's way too much food in here. In fact, I've got a problem. One of my frames broke. One of the things I hate about wooden frames and one of the reasons why I'm probably gonna go to straight up plastic. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. 
There we go. So again, this one here completely filled. And uh, looks like we got a lot of bees down in there. So we're gonna take and, uh, I don't know what to do about this. I may brush the bees in and try to fix this one before we put it back in. All right, look at that. I don't see any signs of brood, but it's still been really cold. And I'm only on the second one too, so. We're gonna go ahead, leave this guy alone. I'm gonna push you out, put you in, and go get another one here. another one okay so we got another one here from my dead out that has some feed in it so I'm just going ahead and pop that in it's a little tight where the wood is swelling from being uh, wet and so there's that let's go ahead and seal it back up and see if we can clean up some of this mess thing I am looking to make sure and I didn't really pay much attention is just making sure that Queen wasn't involved in any of that. I don't think she was. I don't see why she would be way over there in the end, but it's hard telling. These bees have a mind of their own. Alright, so let's put all this back together. And what I'm gonna do, this guy really doesn't need any feed. This one over here does, so I'm gonna swap it out. This one's a pretty good one. You can see them spread across several frames. So I just need to, again, make sure that uh, before it gets cold, I push some of this feed in. And that's really all I need to do to this one. Uh, they've been chowing down that pollen too. So uh, good sign, bad sign, I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll probably add another pollen patty to these guys in the next week or so. Hive number five. Again, they, they suck down all the food, so we're gonna have to make up some more food, assuming they don't need any. I just want to see a bunch of bees down there. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. And again, they uh, broke their cluster. They're kind of pushed over here to the right quite a bit. So let me see. And they ate up all their pollen. So I'll be giving these guys another pollen patty, it looks like. So I'm gonna try to push the food around so that they make sure they get it if it does get cold again. And then after that, we'll be good with this one. Okay, so I just pushed the food over on this side. Looking down inside the air, I can see these frames are just plumb full of food. So um, 
<coughs> I won't be feeding these guys for another few days at least anyways. See if I can get them to clean up the rest of the sugar before I move on. There was some pollen in there. It was just buried. So I think I'm good. I'm good here. So there's five, two more to go. So let's see how we do. And we gotta do something. This one here. Again, they they ate up the, uh, the food that I gave them, so let's see what they've got inside, though. This one, everything, all of them are pretty similar. They've they've broke the cluster. They've eaten all the food in the middle. So I'm gonna just gonna kind of rearrange, push this sugar in the middle, and hope that they can clean it up in the next few days or a few weeks rather. And then, uh, cause I want all that sugar gone before spring. So let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. Everything's very similar. Lots of food on the edges. Uh, they've eaten the food in the middle, so we're gonna push that sugar into the middle and uh, you know, close it back up and hope that they can clean it up over the next few weeks. If not, then we're probably just gonna pull it out and go to a liquid feed. This one has a lot of food in it that they have not even touched. But again, there was a ton of food in this one. So this guy right here, let's, haven't touched it. That's been on here for two weeks. So let's see what we can do first of all about the bees. Oh, geez, look at the bees down in there. Get a little bit of smoke, clear them up a little bit. guys they've actually ate up a lot of the food so which is kind of surprising since how they didn't touch any of the liquid we just smoked them so you can't get a good look but there's again they're spread out after over four or five six frames and uh, I don't know what they are down in but uh, they look pretty healthy here everything looks okay and so I'm just gonna rearrange the food again we just kind of pushed everything to the middle uh, the bees I pushed down in with some smoke. They'll rearrange themselves and and then go from there. So we are uh, we're looking pretty good right now. I don't think we're gonna lose any more hives, but you know, good Lord willing, that will uh, that will be the case. Come on, girls. I don't want you to die up here. Everything's looking good. Pretty happy. <laughs> okay. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so we got uh, a little bit of cleaning up to do as far as jars and feed and all that. We got this one frame. Probably going to take it back to the house. I don't know how much of it's sugar water and how much of it is honey. But uh, I may take it back to my, my wife and have her dip her finger in it and see what she says. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy. It's been a, it's been a mild winter here in Maine. And uh, um, the bees have done relatively well. Learned a lot, so ne next year I expect to do even better through the winter, even if the winters aren't this mild. Um, I think I've got a pretty good handle on running a, uh, a single brood operation, and that's, in my mind, that's the way to go. Um, th there's times of the year, especially in the spring buildup, where you go to a, to a double, but by and large, running the single most of the year. Um, it's easier, easier to manage, it's cheaper, uh, because you don't have, you literally are using well, almost half the resources as far as boxes and things like that. So um, it's easier to keep the queen isolated, easier to find the queen, easier to locate problems. And, you know, obviously you get, a, and, you, and you generally get a larger honey crop as well. Uh, the downside of the uh, single brood is uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit more uh, timing. You, you've got to be on your game. You can't just walk away and leave it for weeks and weeks at a time. And uh, I knew that going into it and uh, put a lot of effort into it. So, uh, this next year will be uh, the testament. So, like I said, good Lord willing, we get, uh, we get, was it spring solstice here in a couple of weeks? Uh, we're going to start seeing more and more high 40s, 50 degree weather. So, we will be coming back and checking out the feed and uh, making sure that the feed I think they have plenty of is, is really that. And then uh, we're going to start prepping all of our queen rearing gear. So, uh, this next year we're hoping to expand to 20 hives from these seven and then uh and then kind of go from there so anyways thanks again for watching really appreciate it here it is possibly the first honey harvest of 2020 <laughs> not really it's a frame that was busted when i went to pull it out it broke and so i uh i pulled it out and put another one in there unfortunately this one had a lot of food on it but we're gonna take a look at it it's probably a lot of sugar uh, but uh, there's some honey on it. Babe, can you flip it around? Flip, flip it right around there. Yeah, this, she doesn't want to see her face on it. So yeah, we got a little bit on this side. So let's take a look. We'll take a bite out of it and see what it tastes like. <laughs>